Today, we're going to talk about timing. That is right. Welcome back, nerd friends. We are back at the nerd bench. Timing is something that can be super awesome for your RC experience, can make it better, can make it worse. And I think it's the thing that a lot of when we're getting into this, we want to know what it is. So this video is going to focus on maybe five things that you should know about uh, timing in your RC car setup. I guess first and foremost is what is timing? Timing is the act of the speed control firing the coils at the right time. The, the coils are on the outside of the motor and the magnets in the middle. But timing is the act of firing these coils to make the, the, the rotor move. In a vacuum, I guess you'd say, timing would be zero. The motor would run at the speed that it would run at. So we're allowed to mechanically adjust the timing so that the sensors that read that information advance the firing sequence to make the motor go faster than it normally would. And in a sensorless setup, we do that, uh, or even in a sensor setup, we do that through the speed control to allow it to electronically advance those firing sequences. Basically, timing is the speed control's way of dictating the RPM of the motor in addition to the throttle input. You're right, it doesn't make a lot of sense, but essentially you can ramp up and down timing electronically and then you have mechanical timing in a sensor style motor. In sensor less motors, you only have electronic. I'm not sure if that counts as item number one, but to get, break down what we're getting into. But there are two types of timing and that's the first item and that's kind of what we just discussed is the, the mechanical timing in the end bell that allows you to adjust the sensor board. And again, obviously that's only in sensor style motors to give the speed control different information information to work with. And then there is electronic timing that comes out of the speed control and it uses the information that it gets back from the motor to, I guess you would say, offset or advance the firing sequence to the coils of the motor. So you have mechanical timing in a censored motor and then you have electronic timing in the speed control. There are types of timing, of course, the mechanical and the electronic timing, but inside of the electronic timing, there are two styles, I guess you'd say. There's boost timing and then there's turbo timing. Boost timing has the same amount of adjustable range as turbo timing does as far as like the degrees that it can add. The difference is how you control when that timing starts to kick in. You have RPM control, so you have a start RPM and a finish RPM, and then the timing gets applied across that those two numbers to, to feed in the timing, so to speak. So a very wide RPM range is a lot safer than a narrow RPM range because it feeds that given amount of time in slower. Turbo timing is timing that comes on after you get to full throttle. And it's, often it can be a little bit safer to use because you don't have to know the RPM of your motor or any of that. So you can just go base it off of your full throttle operation. So if it feels real good in the infield and you just want more top end speed, you can use the turbo to do that pretty safely. It comes on once you get the full throttle and you have some adjustability in how fast it feeds in the amount of timing, obviously how much timing, and then also how fast it takes it away because that can affect how your off throttle response is. Or like if you have a section of the track where you're letting off at high speed then getting back on the throttle, that decrease rate can make it you know, get that feel that you need coming back onto the throttle. But the second item I like to talk about is what timing does. And it, it changes a lot of things about the motor. Basically, it's kind of a KV adjuster. You get more RPMs per given volt, uh, but in that you also lose a little bit of torque. So you can use the timing to advance it to get more RPM and reduce it to get less RPM. And then you can also do the same regard to help with the torque, higher Timing will give you a little less torque, lower timing will give you more torque, obviously. Um, all of this affects what I always laugh at, the, the speed of the motor, if you will. And yeah, more timing is faster for the most part at the expense of amp draw and temperature. So like anything, no, no, nothing's for free in this world when it comes to gains and timing is of course just, uh, just like that. And then another common topic is when to use timing. Why wouldn't we just use that all the time? People say it makes it faster, makes it better. And that's a balance of runtime and temperature, like we said. And a lot of times you don't really need it. The car's rad how it is. It doesn't need to be any faster. But the times when you may want to use it is, let's say you're somewhere that the conditions have changed a lot and maybe it's super hot outside. You don't have any pinion gears with you. In that regard, you can actually use the end bell timing to help lower the load on the motor, cool things down a little bit. Or maybe you get into some cooler conditions and you can afford a little more temperature or you want, you know, the track's bigger, whatever the case may be. You don't want to change one whole pinion gear. You can go a little bit of timing on the end bell to help with that. Uh, you can use it to fine tune things and make the 
power band or the delivery of your whoosh of power hit where you need to. Sometimes an infield of a racetrack is very technical, so you need that very kind of mild throttle response. Other, and then when you get to the straightaway, you want all that horsepower back, and you can use the electronic timing advance from the speed control uh, to do that as so, well. A couple things to watch out for when you are doing timing adjustments that I think of gets overlooked a lot. The timing all adds up. So in a uh, sensor-based speed control, you get boost timing, you get turbo timing, and then in the motor, you have the end bell timing. All three of those numbers add up to give you a basic total timing. A 60 degree adjustment in timing is a ton. If you get past 60 degrees on an end bell, that can damage the motor, damage the speed control as well. So you can use that as a real general kind of guide that if you add those all up and they're anywhere close to 60, you're in the danger zone. I'd say even lower than that is dangerous as well. Um, we get a lot of the drag racing stuff these days or folks that turn everything all the way up because why not and that that always kind of ends in one of them smoky tear situations so you want to use your timing very safely and you definitely don't want to uh, go nuts with that right away and keep you know always consider what's on the motor and what that you're going to be adding onto that as well when you make timing changes typically you're going to want to make gearing changes as well just like before we said when you can use it when you can't change gears with a timing change often you want to and must change the pinion gear more timing means less pinion gear is a very simple way to be safe about it and make sure that you don't have a bad time because nobody wants a bad time my number uh, my number five pro tip is always the same in these timing videos just don't use it i'm I say that jokingly, but I'm kind of serious. If this stuff doesn't make sense to you, and it, it seems like this sounds like a different language, maybe watch some more videos about this stuff. I have a couple more that we've done. There's other folks out on the YouTubes there that do fantastic videos on this stuff as well. And we all know that different words mean different things to different people. So by all means, get out there and do a little bit more research before you dive headlong in to using these super awesome features of your, your electronics. If you do have any questions, comments, or concerns, please feel free to shoot us an email. Northamerica at hobbywing.com is our email address that gets to myself as well as our office manager just so we know what we can do to make the shows better, the channel better, all that fun stuff. Well, once again, thanks, nerd friends, for joining me here on the Nerd Bench for another episode of The Charlie Show. We'll see you next time.